What's up guys, my name is Devin, also known as FBE, and welcome back to another episode of Footballers. In today's video, we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the brand new Under Armour Highlight 2022. Alright guys, it's time to unbox the brand new Under Armour Highlight. Let's take a look at the box. You've got the regular black Under Armour box. It says UA Highlight. These are an 8.5. The color is a beautiful black and yellow. All right, guys, so here is the brand new 2022 Under Armour highlight out of the box, looking beautiful as ever. Um, in these videos, what we do is we take a look at the cleat. I kind of give you guys my first thoughts. Guys, I just want to take a quick second away from the video and let you know how you can get access to all these videos up to a month early. You see, when we create videos, we'll actually make around four or five at a time, and then we'll schedule them to release on YouTube once a week every Monday. But if you're a YouTube member, you actually get all these videos as soon as they release. Now with the YouTube membership, you'll get tons of benefits like custom badges when you comment on our videos, all of our videos early, polls and posts asking for feedback on all of our upcoming projects, and you'll also get bigger discounts on stuff like our merchandise and shock visors. If you wanna become a member, all you have to do is hit that join button or click one of the first links in the description down below. All right, back to the video. So first thing I wanna talk about is the design of the cleat. As you guys can see, yes, this is a high top cleat as Under Armour highlights have been since what, 2012? Under Armour highlights have been one of the go-to models for guys who want that premium ankle support. Um, and this year, just first thought, it's kind of flimsy. So I'm not too excited about that because when people go for an Under Armour highlight, they want that lightweight ankle support. We do have it in a yellow and black colorway. We've got a black plate here, some yellow, kind of a cool, like, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, lines design, uh, lack of a better term. And then we've got, you know, on the heel here, some uh, some more of their toxic designs they've been kind of pushing lately. UAF, got a fire, uh, skull and crossbones, and then a toxic waist. So something I kind of noticed right away is the steps. They actually have steps on the outside of the cleat. I think it looks a little bit weird, but let's kind of look at them real quick. So step one, pull diagonal. So I guess when you put this on, uh, first thing you gotta do is pull that there. And then step two is the same thing on the other side. So I'll just do that for you real guys. And then step three, if you guys can see it, it says lace them up. So those are the three steps. For whatever reason, Under Armour felt that you guys needed a little bit of help knowing how to put on these cleats because they are a little bit different. You've got these weird uh, elastics that start down here um, at the side of your foot and kind of wrap around, um, hopefully to give you that locked in uh, support you need and a little bit of uh, Looks kind of cool too. So this cleat does have tons of Under Armour branding and it's not very discreet. You've got three scripts of Under Armour there. You've got the logo here, you've got the logo here, and then you've got the logo on the traction plate. And there's also a logo on the inside part of the toe right there. So I want to give you guys kind of a closer look at these straps right here. Um, they're a little bit weird, but they look like they're pretty breathable. Um, and also um, they're pretty stretchy, so hopefully you can really, you know, pull them and get that super tight fit. Something else I just noticed that I had not noticed before, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but these uh, side, um, what are they called, flex wraps actually go underneath of that insole. So you guys can kind of see it truly wraps around your foot. So when you guys are pulling on these straps, you are pulling your entire foot up and around the foot, which should ensure one of the most locked in fits um, a football cleat has ever seen. Now the actual upper of this cleat is kind of a thin, uh, lightweight material, which is not gonna be great if you guys get your feet stepped on a lot. And then the actual uh, ankle part is like a thin neoprene. I mean, I can push my finger right through it, so there's not a ton of support there. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys are gonna love that, you big skill guys who really, really need that ankle support. Another kind of strange detail I just noticed is the uh, places where the laces go. They're just like, it's just like a bunch of, bunch of rope. It's kind of weird. Next thing I want to talk about is the traction plate. This is the same exact traction plate from the last Under Armour highlights, which I actually never got a chance to review. Um, but you do have some triangle studs here in the rear, a couple like baseball diamond shaped studs all along the side, and then a couple kind of inner smaller teeth that are going to help, you know, dig you out of that high grass or whatever you might be playing in. Hope you guys can see, but all of these tiny little triangles in this part of the cleat are actual spikes. So I really like that kind of gives you guys a little bit of depth so you've got your long studs and your short studs so you should have no problem uh, getting traction on you know whatever type of surface you guys are playing on so just a little bit more about these uh bands this is under armor's flex wrap it appears and it is supposed to lock you in it does say the word Let's see if i can get it uh locked in right there on the side and now the thing i kind of teased about earlier is that this cleat can actually be worn two ways. So now if you guys really don't like how that high cut ankle cuff feels, you do have the option to fold it down and the straps are still gonna work because they do have Velcro both on the inside and the outside. So you guys can 
strap in um, pretty much the same way it's just a little bit of a different fit so when it is folded down like this if i can get it to focus it says flex mode so this is flex mode when it's folded down like this and i'm pretty sure uh, this way is called power mode as you guys can see there is a little uh, picture of the cleat in its high top form and it is called power mode it says hazard for opponents in an area there is a little graphic of the cleat in this mode and that is called flex mode so you got power mode flex mode also now that i've got this cleat unstrapped i just kind of got my first look at this tongue and it does seem to have some padding it's just it's pretty thin i'm not a huge fan that it doesn't go up all the way with the rest of the ankle cuff like it makes a lot of sense if the cleat was like permanently at this height but i feel like with this high cut cleat it would be nice to have it go all the way up and kind of meet this also continuing to go on the inside of the cleat we do have what looks to be a little bit of ankle support it's not the thickest foam in the world but i do want to take out the insole for you guys under armor insoles are some of my favorite they have high rebound they call it their super foam so yeah, enough of the unboxing review first look. Let's move on to the actual unboxing. Kicking off with comfort, I'm very torn on how I feel about this cleat. Some parts of my foot felt really good and then other parts kind of hurt. So I don't really know if I want to call it a comfortable cleat or an uncomfortable cleat. I say it finds itself right in the middle. For example, my toes, top of foot, and my upper ankle felt great. But this strap right here digs right into the side of your foot. It's really painful. But the only way to make it tight is by pulling on that strap. But then it just hurts more. So it's, it's really unfortunate, um, but it does make it uh, pretty uncomfortable. Unfortunately, I don't think Under Armour added enough heel padding in this cleat. When I was wearing them, I did feel some pain in the heel. Like I mentioned earlier, I could feel a blister starting to form. And this is a similar problem that I had on some of the spotlights. So Under Armour does not seem to be putting a lot of padding in the heels of their cleats. Now, the last con I have on the comfort part of this cleat is that there is no breathability whatsoever. If you guys take a good look at this cleat, you'll notice there are no holes, nowhere for the air to escape. So your feet, when you wear these, get really hot really fast. Now, on the other hand, I have some pros for you guys. This ankle cuff does feel really good. This neoprene material is really soft. The tongue is also the same neoprene. It's a nice, thin, lightweight padding on the top of your foot. Feels really good. The upper is incredibly flexible and lightweight, so it kind of moves with you, which I like a lot. Um, overall, those parts are really comfortable. Another thing I love is how easy this cleat is to get on. I feel like that's such an underrated part of a football cleat is how easy it is to get on and off. And these things are so easy because this piece right here folds down um it's easier if i undid the straps but it folds down so you guys can get your foot in there it's a lot easier than the past highlights have been lastly these cleats have under armor super rebound foam which is this awesome green insole that you guys see right here super thick super cushy and it really helps absorb the contact with each step overall these are definitely not the most comfortable cleats in the game but they're definitely not the most uncomfortable either they're a good middle of the road option um, as far as comfort goes throughout this cleat the fit is very strange and it seems to rely heavily on this three-step um, lacing slash strap option thing they've got going on here. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about that. But overall, uh, the fit and sport is very strange. Like I mentioned in the unboxing part of this video, all these straps in this high cuff remind me of an ankle brace. These straps start from the side of your foot and then make their way up, crisscross, and latch on to kind of help prevent some of that side to side ankle movement. Uh, this kind of movement right here, which is what an ankle brace does a lot of the time. When you Velcro them up as they are here, it really does give you some really nice, solid, lightweight ankle support. It's not the most ankle support in the world because this cuff is incredibly thin. It's just a thin neoprene layer, but these straps really do help lock in your foot, which is really nice. It really doesn't take much for the Velcro to come undone, and it's really tedious to strap them back up because you got to pull them back, tighten them up, and then restrap them. Also, something I'm kind of noticing right now after I tested them is that the Velcro has actually kind of scuffed up the neoprene and I only wore it, you know, for a couple hours or so. So kind of unfortunate to see it wearing already so much. The next thing I want to talk about is one of the more unique parts of this cleat, and that is the fact that it can be worn two different ways. As you guys saw in the unboxing, these cleats have a flex mode, which is when this cuff is folded down and a power mode, which is when this cuff is upright. Just for you guys, I did test these cleats in both flex mode and power mode, and power mode is definitely the way to go with these. When these cleats are in power mode, this cuff fits really tight, and you got a really locked down fit around your ankle. And like I mentioned, you got that awesome um, side to side ankle support, which is really nice. Now in flex mode, there is no support, the cuff is loose, and the Velcro is placed pretty poorly. Boom, roasted. When these cleats are in flex mode, the straps are just too long. You guys can kind of tell how loose it is, but it just, this cleat doesn't seem like it was built to actually go into flex mode. It seems kind of like an afterthought because the Velcro is just placed. It just doesn't really work. 
um, it, it, just doesn't, it doesn't work. That's all there's to it. If you guys really don't care about ankle support, you guys can roll with flex mode, but power mode is definitely the way this cleat is meant to be worn. Next thing I want to talk about is the weight of the cleat. These are easily the lightest big skill football cleat on the market, weighing in at 12.2 ounces, which is super duper light for a high cut football cleat like this. It's pretty easy to see why this cleat is so light. The upper right here is super thin, this cuff, super thin neoprene, and then the straps, you can see through them. They're so thin, but they're also strong enough to really strap you in. And since I tested these out for you guys, I can confidently tell you they feel way lighter than 12 ounces on foot. These things feel as light as skilled football cleats. They're, they're really light, they really are. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the traction. These cleats have Under Armour's scatter traction plate, which is the same exact traction plate they've had on their last couple Under Armour highlight models. The traction on these is all right, but it's not really anything in comparison to the Nike Alpha Menace traction plates or the Adidas Free traction plates. It's just not up to par. This traction blade has 12 diamond-like studs and then a couple sharp teeth on the inside to help dig you out of tall grass. Um, I have heard that these do not really do very well on turf because these studs are too long, so definitely a cleat more geared towards grass football fields. When I was wearing these, I was able to cut decently, but not you know anything too crazy. Not a ton of traction, but not like no traction whatsoever. Um, they did their job as a football cleat. They gave me traction in the grass. Um, but definitely not the best on the market. I'd love to see Under Armour bring out some new traction plate innovation next year. So if anybody from Under Armour is watching this, update this, all right, thanks. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the style. In person, I honestly don't think these look great. I mean, you guys can judge them. You guys can see them on your screen. They just don't look that great. They don't scream cool football cleat to me. When I first saw these online, they looked a lot better. It seems to be like some kind of design render and it looks so much more streamlined, so much better. Um, and then when I got them in person, I was kind of underwhelmed with their appearance. I know it sounds like I'm just hating on this cleat, um, but I'm also not a huge fan of the actual, you know, colorway design. Um, there's tons of UA branding. I'm not really huge on the uh, toxic waste branding that is all over the inside, all over the heel. Um, and lastly, I think it's a little bit weird that these cleats have steps on how to put them on. Um, I feel like that's kind of childish. I mean, hopefully a grown adults um, know how to put on a pair of football cleats. And lastly, as I make this video for you guys, there's only like four colorways. One of them is gray, one of them is this, and then there's a whitish gray version and then a blue model. So not really a whole lot of colors for you guys to match to your team. Um, so yeah, that's unfortunate too. What positions are these cleats meant for? So these are a big seal cleat. So QBs, running backs, tight ends, linebackers, and defensive ends, this cleat is built for you guys. Also, I know that highlights are often pretty common among offensive and defensive line, but I don't know if you guys wanna roll with these for this year, because like I mentioned, this ankle cuff is extremely floppy and they are a little bit narrow. But if you guys really like a lightweight football cleat with minimum, kind of medium ankle support, um, then it will work for you guys. But yeah, that's just my two cents. It's time to talk about the price of this cleat. This cleat retails for 140 bucks. Now, yes, 140 is a lot for a football cleat, but when you compare it from Nike's version and Adidas option of big steel cleats, um, the Alpha Menace Elite 3s are 200. And then I think these Greek Ultras are either 160 or 180. Not 100% sure, but 140 is definitely the cheapest of the bunch. Now still, 140 seems to be a pretty steep number for a cleat like this, but they are pretty durable. They're made with some pretty high quality materials. It seems like they should last you a pretty long time. So maybe you guys can justify pulling out 140 bucks for these. Um, but in comparison, like I said, to the other models, it's a solid price.
There you guys have it. There's the full unboxing and review on the brand new 2022 Under Armour Spotlight. If you guys have worn these cleats already, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, consider hitting like, comment, subscribe for more just like this one. My name is Devin, also known as FBE, and thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Footballers.